We have an angry sunspot cluster that fires off a big solar flare and a solar storm, and it's headed straight for Earth. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Our sun definitely brings on the eye candy this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, it may not look like all that much, but do you see this region up here? This is region 2936, and as it begins to rotate into the Earth strike zone, it becomes an X-flare player. In fact, on the 29th, wham, right there, do you see that? It fires off an M1 class flare, and along with it, it also launches an Earth-directed solar storm. You can see the blast wave rippling across the disk like that. That solar storm is not super fast, but it is on its way to Earth, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. Meanwhile, we also have an, a coronal hole that has been rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and we're dealing with the waning fast solar wind from that region. But since then, not too much has been going on, unless you look at the east limb of the sun. We have a couple regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next couple days, and they are definitely solar storm players, so that's going to continue to boost that solar flux up even higher into the triple digits than we already are, and that's great news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, as you can see, for this past week, we've actually been having quite a bit of flare activity. In fact, late on the 25th, you can see nearly an M-class flare. That was from region 2935. But as time has gone on, you can watch that background level continue to rise. In fact, right now, we're sitting about the sea floor, and this means good radio propagation on Earth's day side because you can use this as a proxy for solar flux. We're sitting well into the triple digits, and it's going to continue to be that way. In fact, as we get to the late on the 29th, you can see that we popped an M1 class flare. This is a long duration flare and it's from region 2936 and that was when it launched that big solar storm toward Earth. You can always tell it because the long duration flares are when they launch those big solar storms. And even after that, we're still sitting about the sea floor. So we're going to continue to have decent radio propagation on Earth's day side at least until region 2936 rotates off of the west limb, which will be in about four days or so. But you know what? We have new regions that will be rotating into Earth view from the sun's far side, and that will likely continue to keep that solar flux up into the good range. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, over the past week, we've really been hovering between unsettled conditions and even quiet conditions. And this has been because we've had a couple pockets of fast solar wind from some small coronal holes that have rotated in through the Earth's strike zone. But it really hasn't done all that much. In fact, the largest of the two uh, big pockets of fast solar wind that we've been getting has only been passing through the Earth's strike zone over the past couple days. As we take a look, about the 28th is when we started hitting active conditions, and that was because we had at least a decent pocket of fast solar wind that did bring us a little bit of aurora. In fact, it kept us at active conditions for over 12 hours, a little bit more than half a day, actually, before things began to settle back down. And now we're kind of back to the same thing, where it's kind of unsettled to quiet conditions, depending. And that's from some, you know, remnant coronal holes that are just kind of giving us a little bit of fast wind, but not too much disturbance. But this is all going to change as as soon as that solar storm that's Earth directed hits us, at least by February 2nd. Now, switching to your solar storm prediction models, we're in luck that the three major agencies, meaning NOAA, NASA, and the Met Office UK, are all pretty much in agreement as to when this solar storm is going to hit Earth. So as we take a look at the Enlil prediction model, this is NOAA's version of the model. You can see we're staring at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. Now, the top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and when you take a look and you see that solar storm being launched, 
You can watch it right when it starts hitting Earth. That's literally right at the beginning of February 2nd. And that's a pretty good estimation as to when this solar storm is going to hit. Now, if we take a look at NASA's version of Enlil, we're only going to look at the density panel. Once again, we're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. NASA has the solar storm hitting a little bit earlier, right about 1800 hours on the 1st. So that's just a little bit faster. So if the solar storm behaves in this manner, we could actually see aurora easily coming down to mid-latitudes, possibly even giving us a bigger solar storm impact than we expect. Now, if we switch over to the Met Office UK's version, here, very much similar to the picture. And when you watch that solar storm coming off toward Earth this time, it's a little bit on the slow side. So when the solar storm hits Earth in the Met Office UK's version, well, it's a little bit later on the second, about 5 UT. So we do have a little bit of a window here where it could hit late on the first, maybe early, you know, morning on the second. And, you know, if it hits like NASA thinks, it's going to be a stronger storm. If it hits like uh, the Met Office thinks, well, then it's going to be a weaker storm. Either way, we could easily get Aurora down to the upper tier of mid-latitudes. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And when you take a look at Stereo A, you can see region 2936. That should anchor your view a little bit because that's the region that fires off that Earth-directed solar storm on the 29th. Now, if you look past it toward the sun's east limb in Stereo's view, not only do you see a finger-like coronal hole that could be bringing us a little bit of aurora here in about 10 to 14 days, but you can also see um, more regions on the Earth, on the uh, east limb of the sun. A couple of them actually are definitely solar storm producers, and they might even be M flare players as well, including region 2940 and 2939. 2939 has actually been showing some interesting fireworks. The nice thing is, is that no matter what, these regions and even ones behind it are going to end up boosting that solar flux and keeping it well into triple digits for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, which means decent radio propagation on Earth's day side for easily a week. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase, with the new moon being on the 1st. And even by the 5th, the moon will be only about 20% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch some dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora from a coming solar storm, now is the perfect time. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that big solar storm that is Earth-directed. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting a major storm conditions, really up to about an 85% chance of a major storm right on the second, with things kind of settling down as we move into the weekend. Now, at mid-latitudes, we also have a good chance for aurora. We have a minor storm conditions that are expected, with even up to about a 30% chance of of a major storm. And again, things should be settling down reasonably quickly after that as we move into the weekend. So aurora photographers, if you want to catch some aurora, even down to mid-latitudes, you have a good chance, uh, as you can see, in the midweek once the solar storm hits, but then things should quiet down pretty quickly there afterwards. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we definitely continue to be in the yellow when it comes to big solar flares, and this is due to region 2936. You know, that's an X-flare player. It's the one that launched that Earth-directed solar storm just a few days ago. In fact, NOAA is still giving us about a 40% chance of M-class flares and even a 10% chance of X-class flares over the next few days from this region, and this will likely persist because region 2936 will not be rotating off of the sun's west limb and onto the far side easily for the next four or five days, possibly longer. So GPS users, just realize we are in the risk for radio blackouts right now on Earth's day side, so beware, especially near dawn and near dusk, that you could be dealing with some serious GPS reception issues sporadically. Also, we are having uh, some decent solar flux right now, and this is due to all the regions on, on the Earth 
Earth-facing disk, so amateur radio operators, you're dealing with good propagation on Earth's day side. Of course, you are having to deal with a lot of noise on the bands. That's because the sun is pretty flare active right now, and so it's creating a lot of noise. But at least propagation is good, and it will remain good. And it could easily be good over the next couple weeks because we have even more regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over next week. So enjoy. Now, also, because we de are dealing with region 2936, it is an X-flare player. It does mean we have a risk for radio, or, I mean, uh, radiation storms. So we are having about a 10% risk for an S1 radiation storm. And that adds to the D2 minor range that we are already in. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. Keep your eyes on uh, the, the predictions here to make sure that you're not going to be flying during a radiation storm. And if you have to, definitely include that in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is giving us a lot to consider. We do have that Earth-directed solar storm that was launched from that M1 flare from region 2936, and that solar storm is on its way. It should be hitting us around the second. So aurora photographers, you could get some aurora clear down to mid-latitudes as we move through middle of the week and into the weekend before things begin to settle down, so definitely keep your batteries charged. The nice thing is that we also have a coronal hole that'll be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here in about another week, so that could give us yet another chance for Aurora. So you might have some good chances here, and uh, keep your fingers crossed, because it could be a great show. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you guys should be loving life as well, because we now have that solar flux boosted well into the triple digits, and that means good radio propagation on Earth's day side. Yeah, okay, you have to deal with some noise on the bands, but hey, we are well into solar cycle 25 now, and it looks like we may be staying into triple digits for solar flux, possibly, you know, until solar minimum comes in another seven years. Let's keep our fingers crossed that that's the case. And now you GPS users, well, it's not such great news for you right now. We've got the solar flux up into the triple digits, which means uh, your, your uh, um, GPS reception at low latitudes isn't all that great, even on Earth's night side. And we have radio blackout possibilities because we have a big flare player, an X flare player on Earth's day side. So so that causes problems for you. And of course, we have a solar storm that's coming, and that's going to give you problems on Earth's night side, especially anywhere near Aurora. So, you know, just kind of hang in there. GPS reception will improve. But until then, stay away from Aurora on Earth's night side and stay away from those dawn dust terminators if you want your GPS reception to be top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.